Okay. I am doing an impromptu video today. I have just been going crazy at home. Uh, usually because I don't go out anywhere. So if I'm going to do anything go crazy, it's I'm at home. Because <laughs> I just I don't go anywhere. I'm just too lazy. And should have gone to church today. Did not. So I don't know if I want to confess that or not. Should not. Um, but did not. And so I just got to playing. And yes, this is playing. I consider this playing. This is not work, per se. But um, so what I have done is going through my food supply and just kind of attritioning out things that I'm using, not using, and looking at my preps and figuring out what really is it that I want to do and what I want to keep. Um, I do have, I have two of these buckets. So that's what I want to do. I've had, had these for a while. I've been wanting to use or do a review on these Emergency Essential. It's a really long title I had to put on there because I wanted to get the entire description on there. But at BePrepared.com, Emergency Essentials, pretty good company for the most part, I, I think. I mean, they have a lot of stuff and their prices are pretty good. Uh, this is a 72-hour four-person supply bucket. And what I liked about this was... Here's, here's a positive on this, is that everything is individually packaged. So it's not like you get one big envelope and that's for four people. You get one pack and that is for one person. Like this is one of the breakfast things. This is um, granola and milk. So what I have been doing for the past uh, 20 minutes now <laughs> is I have opened this joker up and I've just been rip snorting through every one of these. Papa truck, how's it going? <laughs> hey, good to see you, man. I have been rip snorting through every, like as many of these things as I can. And I'm like thinking I should do a video while I'm here. So I have got, so I have tried, I think I threw away most everything, but I have tried, um, the chi first off the chili. Yeah. This is one of the things. Let, well, let me read off what it's got in there. First off, it says it's 2000 calories a day for four people for three days. Um, and it's got, um, brown sugar, oatmeal, cream, um, cream of wheat, Granola with milk, Italian breakfast, chocolate delight. I, don't, I didn't see that. I don't know what that is. Alfredo pasta, chili, and mac and cheese. Okay, so, and I guess chocolate delight is chocolate pudding. I don't know. I tried, um, okay, first off, I tried the chili. This thing is kind of like you would imagine. It's a big old high salty sodium mess. It really is. It tastes like every other kind of instant chili mix that I've ever tried anything. I, I know I didn't add enough water to it, but I could kind of tell. It's just, this has a lot of sodium in it. In fact, let me see if I can tell you. Chili, sodium. Where's the sodium line? So, sodium. Oh, Lord, I can't read it. Because it starts over here and I have to follow on the way around. It is, oh, oh, wow. Wow. 1,590 milligrams of sodium. That cannot be right. Yeah, I reckon that is. Yeah. Yeah, and then total carbohydrates is 55 grams total carbohydrates. This has 1,590 milligrams of sodium in it. Yeah, bad. Okay, we're well, looking at the uh, pasta Alfredo. It's one thousand four hundred and fifty. Chocolate delight has three hundred. The Italian breakfast has one hundred and ten. Granola with milk has one hundred and sixty. How do you have sodium and granola and all the cream of wheat? Or it says creamy wheat, so it's technically not cream of wheat. Fifty-five milligrams sodium, and the oatmeal has one hundred and seventy milligrams. The mac and cheese has got fifteen hundred and fifty milligrams. Man alive. Okay, so chili, not crazy about. Um, cream, farina creamed wheat. It's I didn't even I didn't try that one yet. Um, granola and milk. I like this one. This is pretty good, <laughs> actually. No need to add milk. You just add a little water in there, and actually, it was a decent little breakfast. Uh, but if you notice one thing, what do you notice on these packages? It's one thing I was kind of afraid of when I opened this thing up, thinking, mm -mm, that is portion size. But this, but you look at it, you add all this up stuffed up together. And of course, I know they have things bulked up with extra sodium and all whatever and, and filling stuff. But you look at your portion sizes on this. Here's breakfast. Here's a dessert. Here's an entree. 
Here's breakfast, here's a dessert, here's an entree. Look at this portion size. Look at that. You know, we just eat too darn much in the U.S. We really do. And I just have to, I have to monitor that myself. But I think this is one thing good for teaching you how to um, portion control. But let me turn this around and show you. Don't, again, pardon the house. It's, look at this. I mean, this is like a big old, but it's like Christmas when you open this thing up. You're like, man, this is awesome. It's high sodium, but perhaps an enamel. I, you know, Jilly Girl, I guess, I don't know. Is high sodium really good in, in an emergency situation? I, do you want that much? I, I don't know. I get, I don't know. Okay, potato cheese soup. See, I keep thinking Florida in the summertime. For one thing, I don't want to be heating up too much. Florida in the summertime is when hurricanes come along. I don't know if I don't want to be heating up too much. And I sure as heck don't want to have to have something that's going to make me drink more water and make me feel even more thirsty. I just, I don't see the logic on that. This potato and cheese soup, oh, it's cooling right now. So actually, I got, I got, um, hold on, there's this. All right. Hey, Spicy! How's it going, man? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> good to see, good to see you. All right, let me, let me show you. This is the, um, this is the potato and, and cheese soup. This actually looks pretty good. And I did not let the, um, I'm going to show you my other stuff I got going on there. Hold on. Okay. That soup's not bad. Um, yeah, that's true. You care about good, you know. You know what? I like the potato soup. I need to let it sit for a little longer because my potatoes are a little crunchy. That's actually not too bad, but that does have a whole bunch of sodium in there too. That one had, hold on. That one had, oh, potato soup is right at the front. 860 milligrams. Mm-hmm. That had a lot. That had a lot. Uh, the fried rice I wasn't a fan of. I don't even see, yeah, there it is. There's on the list. Fried, fried rice, let me show you this. Um, <laughs> this is um, a nutrition information there. So if you want to kind of look and see, if you want to freeze the screen, but there's where that is. And I'm just going to do a slow pan around so you can freeze this to look at them stats. Okay, you want to, and then there's that. Uh, instant milk. I didn't see instant milk in there. I still have not dug through this whole thing to find every last... Yeah, I guess pasta is the Alfredo. Pasta Alfredo. I'm just going to dig through. And... Oh, yeah, here's the thing. So if you just want milk, there's a one thing of milk. Which is, that's good to have. And then there's more of that chili. Um, okay, let me show you something I didn't like. This one is the Italian breakfast. This thing. Uh, not, not too, too high in sodium, I saw. This basically is just shredded potatoes. And again, in order, my kitchen's a mess, I'm sorry. Uh, let me get my... But this, look at that. I added what I thought was too much water. And it fluffed up really good. This actually is really good. It's hard to mess up potatoes. Mm-hmm. 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 I like that one. That's good. Mm -hmm, that's good. So I mean, I'll hold on to these things, but um, because having something's better than nothing, but I might use some of these things judiciously or use them in, as ingredients in other, other dishes. That soup is good. Mm-hmm. That soup's all right. I like the soup. I tried the vanilla pudding. The vanilla pudding is okay. Um, I think it would too. Yeah, spicy. That's why I got it. So I've calculated it. So it's three meals a day for four people. So that's 12 meals. So, that, right, wait a minute. No. Is that right? 72 hours. That's three days. Oh, Lord, don't make me do math. Okay, for four people. I've calculated it out. This is all basically almost two weeks. 140 single serving pouches. Now you're going to make me get math out. Um, hold on. So three goes into 100, 140. 
three. 140 divided by three is 46. That's not right. 46 days? No, that's dumb. I hate math. I can't stand it. Um, are y'all talking about Wiggins? Are y'all going to Wiggins this year? I don't think I'm going to be able to go. Y'all, I got to clamp down financially. <laughs> I go, yeah, y'all are talking. Fear of missing out, fear of missing out, fear of missing out. I don't think I can go. That was, um, from Florida, that was a long haul. I mean, that was, that was, that was 10, 10, 11 hours. Um, it took a long, I know, five months to save up. You're right. I know, but I got to cut out somewhere. And I think doing that's the one thing I'm going to have to do to cut out. Um, and plus, I had to take a little time off of work to do that last year. And I can't, I can't do that either this year. I'm taking enough time. So I got potentially, uh, you know, my travel company is going to Greece. No more ice cream. You hush. Papa, no. Mm-mm. So... <laughs> Sorry, no. Ice cream is actually... You know what? It's on my budget sheet. I wrote down there. It cost me $5.07 to get a, a Culver's double scoop ice cream. And so I actually wrote that into my budget. So I wrote that in there. So I, I, may, I get to do that. I haven't figured out if I get to do it every week or every other week. So... But you could, yeah, you must have yelled that. But no, I actually wrote that into my budget. So I got to um, figure if I can maintain that. <coughs> that was good. The, um, yeah, that was a good call. But I had to um, had to think about um, upcoming stuff. I got the travel company is going to be going to Greece um, in April, probably. If we can get enough folks, if you want to go to Greece on the Steps of Paul tour, uh, let me know. And it is thirty nine ninety eight, and that includes includes your airfare, and that's oh lord, of course now I can't remember the date. It's either it's like April second or April fifteenth. I'm gonna have to look now. Um, yeah, yes, Jilly, thank you. You tell them budgeting for ice cream is a necessity. <laughs> but um, uh, lord, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, going to Greece, so I'm gonna have to budget for that. And even if it, even though that trip itself doesn't really cost me anything, it still costs me because I'm still new with the company I'm with. And uh, out of Goshen, how's it going? Shabbat Shalom. Don't judge me too harshly, I'm playing right now. I call it playing, it's not work. I'm playing, I'm having fun. I'm going through food storage right now. So, <laughs> I'm going through, um, so I'm going through my long-term food storage. And I'm eating lots of things, you know, and eating like I shouldn't be doing. But, um, yeah, so even taking time off from work is, um, taking time off from work costs money because I have very little, vac now as of, well, as of late December, I'll have some hours. Good, I'm glad to hear y'all are amazing. Um, and Ashley, we're still waiting for Ashley to have her little one. So, um, yes, I, we will take, I'll take photos and videos. And then don't forget, we'll be having another trip to Israel. Um, Coming up in November for sure, and I think another one in January. So, ch chilling in the snow. I'm sorry, it's up to 80 degrees right now. Well, it's 76 in my house right now because I got the air conditioner on, of course. But um, it's I think 780 something outside right now. Still, we're hot. We're hot in Florida. So anyway, no vacation time, and that of course, you know, there's no such thing. Lord have mercy. Don't judge me. This is awful. My it was clean. My kitchen was clean when I walked in yesterday, and the kitchen was absolutely clean. And then, of course, I get these bright ideas, and then it's 45 in South Arkansas. Oh man! Actually, that sounds pretty nice, to be honest with you. It's clean in my kitchen, and then yesterday I got this bright idea. Yesterday morning before work, I got this idea. I thought, you know, what, let me try this. This is a book I've had for a while. This is the 100 Day Pantry. And it's mostly, it seems like it's mostly canned stuff. Like um, this lady does a long-term food storage with mostly, and she's got mostly canned and some, some um, refrigerated stuff and some freeze-dried stuff in there a little bit, or at least dehydrated. 
and I thought I would um, try a couple of the recipes. I got chicken taco rice and the Mexican chicken casserole. So I'm gonna try those two recipes, and then of course I've got all the ingredients for um, both of those things here, along with ingredients for chili. Um, chili because I'm trying some new ratios to see if this size can would work, and I've got these leftover freeze-dried corn um, packs. Trying these new ratios here to see if I can economize and make a smaller batch amount than what I have been doing. And the ingredients I'm starting up for a poor man's cake and then <laughs> getting some Thanksgiving stuff up. I think I should just do a video. And I think I want to make some Oreo chocolate balls. Um, all right, Spicy, it was good talking to you too, man. We'll see you later. Thank you for dropping in. Uh, that's fun. So that's basically it. Let me just show you kind of in my food storage. Like I said, I'm developing a long-term plan. Here's my my soap I got curing down there. That's my current batches of soap. And I'm getting everything organized here. But what I want to do is, and there's my bookshelf of all this other kind of stuff. But there's my other bucket right there. So I've got two. But I'm just working on getting mostly shelf-stable stuff as much as I, I can. I want to get at least three months. I want to have a three-month supply of a set menu on my shelves. And I will incorporate some dehydrated, some dried, some frozen. I'll incorporate, what was it? I think it's, um, there's a couple of ladies that do food storage. I think it's food storage made simple. I can't remember that they do a, um, I think, I think it was, I got it from them. It's like, you know, you don't eat your dehydrated stuff all the time. You know, you mix things up with your frozen and you do that as your first tier. And then you, um. Uh, then you, you know, you take care of your first tier and then you use your dehydrated for, um, other stuff. So thank you, Jelly. Do you have, do you have a long-term food storage plan? I don't, I don't, I'm working on one, like I said. And here's an idea for somebody. I don't want to write a cookbook, but if somebody wants to write a cookbook on, uh, a complete shelf stable food cookbook. Now I know there's some out there. Let me go back to my, let's go back here again. Um, a complete shelf stable cookbook that um this one is like this one's can do cook you know pop it stir it pop it stir it fix it serve it it's got a jingle that i wrote for it uh can do cooking can do cooking this lady does mostly canned stuff and i haven't really tried much of that and then in the bag it's in the bag this is another good one that's i think i tried a couple of things i think i tried like the turkey and thanksgiving recipe in there or the thanksgiving turkey recipe it's not too bad and i kind of incorporate um other little stuff what i can but this is just still not quite put together because <laughs> i would like to be able to go in there and pull things for camping like if i want to eat while i'm camping and I, and I do like to eat while i'm camping sometimes uh i can just go in and just pull something and it's food that i make here at home every day and then i can all either i can change out with fresh or frozen or freeze-dried and dehydrated and i might be going through emergency essentials now for most of my dehydrated and freeze-dried stuff because i let my membership at thrive life lapse because i didn't buy too much because i didn't plan well ahead enough and so i'm like oh man i'm sorry going batty because they were my my sponsors and then sorry going batty and sorry um to brad and krista because they're also up there too. When am I coming to Michigan for a visit? I am ready to come to Michigan. Well, I, you know what? I take not, actually, I'm not ready right now. I don't want snow. I don't want snow. <laughs> I don't want to go up when it's that cold. But I think once y'all get settled up, or se one does not settle up, does one. One settles down. Once y'all get settled down, well, one does settle up, but in this case, one settles down. Once y'all get settled down, then I will... Um, I may hitch y'all up for a visit. And I don't know if I'll bring my little tiny camper with me or not. So I may actually just, but here's my little, yeah, maybe in the spring, but there's my little camper outside right there. See my little camper, my little runaway, it's ready. And it's now perfect adventure time here in Florida. So it's, uh, this is the time of year. Um, I don't, oh, dehydrator. I'd love to hear about some dehydrator talk to Jelly Girl. All right, Papa Chuck, we'll see you later, man. Thank you for dropping in. Um, 
Yeah, Jelly, I'd like to hear some folks talk about a dehydrator too. I had one, but it was a lower end one. It was one of those um, Walmart round kind. I think Excalibur is the way you want to go for dehydrating. And that's, you want to get um, a higher end on that. And plus it's rectangle. Excalibur is rectangle. I like rectangle things. I don't like circular things. I like things that are rectangular. Because when it comes to storing stuff, it's like, you know, round stuff doesn't store as well as square stuff. It's just round is a space waster. Space waster. You want square. You want square thing. It's one thing the selling, back to the bucket. One of the selling points in this bucket, which is a cool bucket, by the way, this is a heavy thing too. It's square-ish. You know, it's got squared off corners and it's rounded, but it's a square bucket. And it fits up there better. You know, round buckets just waste a lot of space. Round buckets. I like, I like square stuff. So anyway, that's just our basic gist of it. It was nice to get to talk to a few of y'all. That was, that was well worth it. So it was very good. So I didn't, don't feel so, don't feel so alone today. That's nice. Um, oh, you do have an ex, do you have a, a dehydrator? Oh, okay. We use it. I, I, I missed that conversation. Okay. Good to see you all. And I'm going to, um, probably not work at cleaning my house, but I'm going to have fun cleaning some things up if that doesn't count as work out of Goshen. So, <laughs> all right, Eric and Ashley, y'all don't, don't think of me too harshly, but, um, I don't know if I should, maybe I should have mixed up more of these things here, like the brown sugar oatmeal, the Italian breakfast. I'll go through a couple of like mac and cheese. I think, um, if one person living in an apartment, I do pantry and freezer, but I have a stuff refrigerator freezer going to be moving once. A oh, okay. It do oh, was that it does for me? I guess so. Okay. All right. I'm actually it's almost noon, which man, I've been up since four thirty, so I think I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> I think I'll go. T I think I actually do that. I'm kind of ready for a nap. I'm kind of ready for that. I'm not gonna mix any more of these up. Y'all know what dehydrated food tastes like for the most part, and I think this crowd does. Um. It, um, but maybe I'll, I'll stir around in the soup a little bit more. It does count as work is what I mean. I know. I know. It's hard to, I can't get around that one either. I think. I know you don't, Eric. I know you don't judge. So, I know you don't. This is, um, mm-hmm. You know what? I've been sitting for 25 minutes. Mm-mm. The -mm. potatoes are still crunchy. Mm -mm. That's still crunchy. How long do you have to let that sit? Mm -mm. No. I'm going back to my Italian breakfast. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Italian breakfast is fine. <coughs> All right. I'm going to have a hands free thing. Where'd that mac and cheese go? I'm going to do a mac and cheese now. So everybody fast forward to the part where we get the mac and cheese if you want to do that. Oh, there it is. All right. I'm going to put y'all up here. There we go. All right. There we go. Mac and cheese. It's a lot of powder. That's a mac and cheese. I don't see any macaroni in there. It just looks like white powder. There is no... There's no macaroni in the macaroni and cheese. Maybe I'm supposed to add... Let's... got some of that other um you've never been a fan of potato soup yeah this is mostly carbs and mo i guess maybe this pasta where's the pasta hold on all right pasta 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 now why in the world would they have added oh it has oh it's got Flavor drink mixes too. Here's a fruit flavor drink mix. So that's kind of that's kind of neat. I'm looking for a pasta. Hold on. 
chocolate delight, chocolate pudding, chocolate. Brown sugar oatmeal. Is this just not exciting? Okay, stew, stew, stew. Seriously, do I not have... Okay, I'm just going to add water to this thing and see what this does. All right, I'll stir that around in a second. I am really getting ready to just uh, get rid of all this stuff out. Oh, here we go. Here's pasta. Okay, here we go. A little bit of pasta. Okay, a little bit of that. Are you loving this? I'm glad somebody's loving this. This is... Okay, yeah, so it was plain pasta. All right, I thought the pasta was Alfredo. But it was... All right, okay, I'm getting it now. So I wonder if there's an Alfredo sauce. Hmm. You know, actually, now that I think... Maybe the bucket's not exactly as truthful as it should be. Um, because... I don't see an Alfredo sauce on here. And it said, is the stove and the microwave gonna work when you get clean water? Well, I, Jilly Girl, see that's, you gotta, yeah, it's gonna take more than just, let me do this way. Yeah, it's gonna take more than putting um, a bucket on a shelf. You do have to store water and probably a way to purify it, which by the way, I've been using this Zero purifier that I got at Walmart a few months ago. Okay, that's, there we go. The Zero purifier, uh, it came with a water tester. I just, I dumped, I threw away the water tester. Because um, typically I just drink tap water for the most part. And if it just helps out a little bit, then I'm okay with that. And so I just switched out the filter again. It's 15 bucks. Was it 15 or 30? My weird, my head does weird division and multiplication sometimes. But at Walmart, it was like 15 or 30 dollars for one of these filters and, um, and yeah, and so it's just gonna last a, uh, oh, I need to make a solar oven. I don't need to make a solar oven. I've got one, okay, I'm gonna take into my secret lair back here again, so. A solar oven. I think I did a couple of videos on this solar oven. So I've got one of the All-Americans. Um, it's right there, tucked in the corner, that I, I'm not gonna get out right now. But it's the, um, it's the All-American, yeah, the All-American, not the Global Sun Oven, same company, but it was their second generation. It's a little bit bigger. Um, oh, that's right, Lisa, you can purify water in it. It's $15 for 130 for two. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. I was, I couldn't. So it was $15 that I paid for that one filter. Um, you know what, after a while, Jelly, it's like I got freaked out because every now and then there's some kind of additive, I guess it's a chlorine type, that Florida adds to the water. But to me, it smelled like tenactin. So I'm thinking, okay, it's, it must be an antifungal that they add to the water. And now I'm basically just drinking athlete's foot spray. So I just kind of decided that I was going to get a filter and just drink water better um, that way. I um, also used that to make my last batch of soap. I didn't buy distilled, so we'll see how that turns out. Um, yeah, my lavender soap, I used that to make my lavender soap. So hopefully that'll work out. Maybe that's Tara Kellum approved, I don't know. So <laughs> we'll see if we did. Yeah, Florida water. Ironically, I like if it's sulfury, a little touch sulfury, it makes me feel like I'm on vacation. Um, but I haven't had good sulfury water in Florida since I moved down here, um, cause it stopped being sulfury like maybe a couple years after I moved down here back in, um, probably cleared up like around 91. And they got a new, out in Kissimmee, they got a new water filtration, um, a new filtration system or something. And it's, and then the vacation taste went away. So I hated, you know, it was kind of sad. A little sulfury, yes, and especially when you get around, about also 15 years ago, I stayed out in Sebastian Inlet, went to Sebastian Inlet for the day 
to a friend's. Yeah, because we used to vacation down here in Florida when I was a kid. And sometimes out in Myrtle Beach area, you get that little sulfury taste out near the ocean. But at Sebastian Inlet, the water was so brackish out where I went out for the day. It was just awful. I mean, it smelled so horrible. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't, you just can't know. Just smelling it. Rotten eggs. Rotten eggs. It was bad. Bad. But just a little bit of that, and it's, um, it's a, a nice day off. It really is. It's just, you know, having, it's like, it, like, uh, like I said, it brings back those childhood memories of coming to um, Walt Disney World <laughs> to vacation. We would go to, stay at a campground, and that campground had that little, so, little slightly brackish water, and that was just nice. I liked it. Um, but my sun oven. Yeah, I got, um, I did a couple of videos on my sun oven. Ironically, in Florida, I'm not having good luck with this stinking sun oven. I just really, really have a hard time with the construct of this um, solar oven because it is, um, yeah, Jilly, I think New England, all of New England has pretty decent water too, don't they? I think. But there's something weird about the smell. And I've had this thing for like maybe almost 10 years now. <laughs> At least eight or nine years I've had it. And it is... It's just, there's this consistent smell. I can't get rid of it. And it in, and it just eats into anything that I cook in there. Like I made like an au gratin potato uh, casserole and it just, it, um, it ate right into it. I mean, I just, all I, I tasted, you know, Betty Crocker potatoes and that weird plasticky smell. Um, Berkey, yeah, jelly. Berkey system. That's yeah. I can't wait till she answers you about what a Berkey system is. But that's why I got the zero water because I think it's the closest thing to a domestic type. Um, yes, it is. Yeah, that's my that's my machine. Yeah, it's my machine back there. Let me show you what. Because I am antsy, I can't. I hate to sit down and work. So I got this really cool high low table from IKEA. And my home is not a home. It's not a show place. It's apparently a production center. So I got this cool high-low table from Ikea that the little crank goes up. And so up and down it goes. And if I want to sit down, I can. But what's nice is it's high enough that I can sew standing up. I can sew, go over here and cut and iron. And these are all shirts that I have now gotten too fat to wear. Um, and I'm going to make a nice seersucker quilt out of those i think and i finished up a project from my niece uh it's a good table i highly highly recommend that table my sister loved it so much she got one for the same thing and um but this is an american flag that i made here look at this let me see if you like this this is just fun i was playing around and saw this thing so i'm gonna make a wall hanging out of that Isn't that cool <laughs> That fun. That fun. Doesn't make you laugh. I like that. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to make a wall hanging for my desk at work. It's a little, you know, little wintertime flag. So, um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I forgot that was out there. So, um, yeah, I just I do I need something to kind of keep me busy, and um, I like not like I don't have enough to keep me busy, but that's one thing that does keep me busy. <laughs> And I started uh, quilting a little bit when I was in, uh, oh, cool, thank you. It's, um, I started quilting when I was in grad school because I just needed something to kind of take my mind off of it. And I wanted something to, um, no, are you kidding for big bucks? N no, no, not, not for big bucks. Not when it's all little bucks. <laughs> um, thank you though. No, it's really kind of a hack job really it's really kind of a hack i'm really kind of a hack still in fact i've only um i've got two quilts right now at the quilter at the long armist who is gonna um what am i doing um yeah who um i got two long uh quilts at the long armor that i'm going to um have to give away as gifts and you see what i did there you like that yeah the um that they're going to be my first two gifted quilts. And so I just, I don't, like I said, don't tell too many folks that I do that. Um, it's just kind of a personal thing that I do. And I just like to be 
not to be active. But I got it, like I said, I got, got into it in grad school, and as I'm trying to lose weight, I wanted to find something I could do that I could make to give away as a gift that is not food related. So, um, so I figured this is good. And then now I've also got the soaping thing. So I've got the soaping thing going on. And I had a friend of mine in Idaho who first showed me how to do soap. Of course, I tried it 20 years ago. I tried doing soap 20 years ago and then I kind of forgot all about it. And then I had a friend of mine from Idaho who gave me a good recipe and, and some instructions a few years ago. And then now Tara Kellum, who ha now has her e-course, you know, how to make soap. And she's taught me how to do some fun stuff. Good morning, Christy. Good morning. How many do uh, fun things with colors? And this one is a pine tree. I kind of want to call it Christmas tree. I, I reckon I'll call it that. Pine tree. So this is my ruby red grapefruit. So that smells really good. And this is a really bad looking apple pie. So these are things. Yeah, I, I, these are all to give away. I just, uh, I don't, <clears throat> I guess I don't have enough confidence or, you know, in what I'm, what I'm making to kind of sell it. And quilting stuff and crafting stuff, no, you, you can't ever make your money on that. You really ever can. I just don't think you can. I have no patience for Etsy. In fact, my friend from Idaho, I talked to her about Etsy, and she says, yeah, it's not bad. Um, but she sells the stuff that she makes. She does bracelets and things, but she sells them, you know, to people in person. And um, frankly, I just don't want to bother with shipping the shipping and the packing and dealing with people because people are awful. People are awful. That's just, hate to be crass about it, but I just don't like dealing with people too much. Um, and so I am supposed to go to a big party tonight and it's like, I don't want to go, which is nice. I'm honored that I'm invited and I've been invited for the past, <laughs> they usually have like a big fall barbecue, you know, and this fella does it big. He's got brisket going on the smoker for like brisket's been going on the smoker for for like since yesterday i saw on facebook i mean yesterday last night early this morning and great they put a lot of effort into it but it's just i don't like mixing and mingling with um too many folks however have to go back to the homestead gathering at wiggins mississippi that was a completely parties and jonathan do not mix that is very very true but I have to just look back in amazement at our experience at Wiggins and for what that would normally put me into, I, I don't have social anxiety. I just got, it's okay, maybe mild social anxiety. I'm kind of like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But that the home, Deep South Homestead Gathering, I know there's another one coming up in March. And unfortunately, as I was saying, I, I cannot make it to this one. Uh, coming up, I, like I said, just I got to watch my my budget. But that was just a completely different experience, and I think it, I think it was the quality of people. I'm going to be a little bit snobbish, and say that the quality of people. I think I was just relaxed to the point that you know you're going to be around good, good people. Y'all can't make it either. Oh, Worms, Lisa can't make it either. I'm sorry. Yeah, I feel, it makes me feel like I'm missing out just a little bit less. And I don't know if the Kellums are going to go or not either. I haven't heard whether they're going to go or, or not. <clears throat> but um, it was just, it was so nice. In fact, I even <laughs> I even felt like, felt more social. And I usually do that. If like I click with people, um, yeah, they're very sweet spirit of people together. It really was. And it's just, um, I, I didn't feel any of that at all. In fact, I wanted to hang around, which is sometimes that happens, you know, with, with us very, I'm a very social, antisocial person. So if, if the chemistry is right and the atmosphere is just right, I click in, I'm there. I am there. And, um, it was just, like I said, you know, Danny and Wanda are just phenomenal hosts. And so they're at the fairgrounds. They created just a very warm, welcoming environment and everyone, it was just, it was amazing. It really was just an amazing time that even when the event was over, usually I'm ready to go crash and go hide and just kind of read a book and be just think about my behavior. I no, nope, I wanted I wanted to hang out more. <laughs> just I wanted to hang out more. So um, I just thought that was really good. So if anybody out there is thinking about going to Deep South Homestead Gathering, I highly recommend that you go. Uh, you will have a good time uh, if you make it a good time. 
So if you, that's up, up to you. But um, that was, uh, this has been fun. I've gotten to talk to some folks. I just expected to come on for like six minutes <laughs> and just talk about a bucket of freeze-dried food. And uh, instead, a lot of the folks that I met at the Homestead Gathering are here chatting. So that's been, it's been really fun. It's been really good. I do miss everybody. And it's just kind of odd that YouTube has created a, a platform where you can meet people from all over and, uh, and actually have a good connection with them. So <laughs> I just look forward to, to when I can see everybody again, though. Um, like I said, might have to skip this year. Um, you're going to look into purchasing something. Maybe the homestead parties won't. Um, it's true to have more in common, I think. And, and I think when you do have people that are... That's a good point. I think when you do have people with a, a similar mindset, you're going to feel more relaxed. That's very true. You don't feel as defensive or you're going to have to be on the defensive. Uh, I went in pretty confident it was going to be a non-abrasive atmosphere. Um, you know, no, it's a family event, really. I get, you know, don't, no drinking, no, no cussing, no, you know, no, just basically just good folks, you know, really. <laughs> just, just no drinking, no cussing, no partying, no brash behavior. Um, no silliness and foolishness, which was just nice. So, um, that's really been a thing for me lately is just no foolishness. I'm just, I'm tired of foolish behavior and I've gotten such a low threshold for it. I like humor and I like people being funny, but when, when foolishness becomes a lifestyle and not just, uh, a way to make a point, <laughs> you're trying to tell myself out of parties or, or going on, but sometimes I'm happily surprised. I do the exact same thing. In fact, I have even, I think it was this same party. They have a, my friends, they're up in Claremont or close to Claremont. So they've got, they do this twice a year and they do a spring one and they do a fall one. I think it was one of the spring ones where I went up, got in my car and I turned right back where I just said, I can't do it. I got dressed, showered ready. And which is, you know, good in and of itself got dressed showered ready got in my car headed on the way up and i'm like i just i no, i'm gonna no can't do it stayed home um put on my bathroom wrap got on the couch and watched star trek next generation on netflix it was just the best night ever um yeah eric it's just too many people i can't i can't handle it now sometimes i'll get dressed for parties i'll get you know shower and then i'm done and then I'm like, you know what? I'm not, no, I have a shower. I feel great. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Especially this time of year. This time of year, I'm almost done by the time I get out of work. <laughs> it's just, I'm done by the time I get out of work. I am, um, you know, it's dark. At, it's uh, at 6, at 6 30. Make it so. Yes, make it so. Du at 6 o'clock, it's like getting dark. And at 7, I'm in and I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I hate. I, I hate to say hate, but it's like I don't like that we're not on daylight savings time anymore because I love getting off work and having day number part two uh, where you can even go home. You have time to come home, take a little nap, get up, have another cup of coffee. And it's like you've got a whole other day ahead of you with daylight to get stuff done and productivity and you can be productivity and do things and have fun. Mm -mm, not now. Mm -mm. It's dark at six o'clock. It's time to go to bed. And so I was actually asleep at... Eight o'clock last night. I was drifting off to sleep at seven thirty last night, um, but I think I went to actually went to bed at eight or eight thirty, and then yeah, Christian, I hibernate too. I'm done, and I was up at I was up before my alarm, which I have my alarm set for every day, even though you know it's my weekday alarm, but it still goes off on Saturday and Sunday, and the reason I do that is because. Like on mornings like this, my alarm will go off. I'll go, oh, I got to go. Oh, I can go back to sleep. And then I go back to sleep. It's just a way to have fun. It's like, hey, my alarm's off. I, I don't have to, I don't, but I don't have to wake up. I have to do it. Or I'll get up because I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get up now. Um, so it gives me, the, I, love, I love having the option to get up or go back to sleep. And so, uh, but I was up at like 4.30 this morning and just got went about my business and had a good time. Oh, class reunion, Lisa. Those are awful. Oh, uh, drank by the... Uh, yeah. Class reunion's awful. Here's the great thing about social media. 
Um, oh, Jilly, are you good? Oh, sorry. J Jilly was good talking with you. To Family Homestead, hey, Sherry and Daryl, how you doing? Good morning. It's the morning. It's the okay, good morning. <laughs> oh, hello. Yay. <laughs> Here's my thoughts on, um, it started, Sherry, this started off with a, uh, with a freeze-dried food bucket review, and now we're just chit-chatting. <laughs> so, but my thoughts on reunions now, social media has made it as such that anybody you've ever kept in touch with or want to know about, you, you, you're keeping in touch and knowing about them. So there really is no need to expend the energy to actually uh, go take a shower and actually go to a convention hall to see people from 20 years ago. And, you know, that you don't care about. Oh, th thanks for the thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you. Yay, I'm getting a thumbs up from Sherry. Yay, woo! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so it's like, I, I just, and even still, some of the ones that I have talked to, I'm kind of like, yeah, all right, all right. And, um, you know, it's just, it's sad how people come and go in your lives, isn't it? It's just very sad. And I think there's a season for everyone. And it's, um, and as for me, and you know, it's like I've, I've prayed. I said, you know, Lord, if, I said, uh, like I did with my job last year, you know, it's like I said, if you don't want me here, get me out of it. And he did. Um, so, you know, be careful, not, not be careful what you pray for, but be glad that you do pray for it because you're getting what God wants for you. But I've asked him to take people out of my lives that he didn't want in my life. And so he, um, he just, yeah, he didn't give him, yeah. Just because they send me friends, no. Mm -mm, I agree with you, Chair. No, I agree with you on that. But I said, just because um, I lost my train of thought again. I said, yeah, I prayed to the Lord. Yeah, there we go. Pray to the Lord to um, remove people out of my life that you want, don't want in my life. So um, I have been thankful that some people have kind of exited on their own. And I just hate it that I have had to exit other folks. You know, I think the concept of standards is, um, there was a little bit of a glare on the forehead, so I had to cut some of the light down. What is it? What is that icon? I can't tell. Are those three little ovens? Or I can't see what the icon is on, on my iPhone. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, that's... Oh, they let you know a week before the event. Wasn't that? Oh, that's another pet peeve of mine. Yeah, just like... Uh -uh. Um, <clears throat> oh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, that was must have been a little train. I couldn't tell. That's it. It's a way of life for me, losing a train of thought. I lost it again. See, I live alone, and so when I have people to talk to now and engage with, I'm like, I'm overstimulated now. I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, but, um, so that's just, yeah, I'm like, I, I, I can't handle this. There are people to talk to now. This is very, very exciting. But, um, you know, I've, I just, I have prayed for the good Lord to extract those folks. And sometimes I've had to do the extracting under, I would say, divine guidance. And, um, because the concept of having, that's it, that's where I was going. Because the concept of having standards is a, is a novelty for some people. You know, you, you have standards, and I don't mean standards of me being, you know, me considering myself better than other folks, but it's like if they engage in behavior that I don't, I don't find it you know, appealing, or if they, you know what I mean? You know, they engage in language or behavior or, or certain actions it's like i think the bible talks about being careful with whom you're yoked and uh so uh people to talk to but we aren't dirtying up your house i would actually love it if y'all were dirtying up my house you just got a little tour of what's around here lisa you should not worry about <laughs> dirtying up my house actually that's one odd thing is like when i do have people over and this is a little fortress of solitude and such. When I do, I, I love you dearly. So if you're in my house, you can almost do no wrong. And I actually appreciate and consider the dirt and the whatever that people, the dirt that people bring to my home or whatever too. I consider that um, almost an honor or a gift in a way. It's kind of odd because I will, uh, Sherry, I won't be in March. No, I won't, I won't be coming up. I was telling 
telling them because uh, I'm watching my budget. I am watching my finances, and I uh, got to really, um, got to really watch my, my pennies and, and dimes for 2019. That's I, I think my New Year's pre New Year's resolution that I'm starting now, and um, and I uh, yeah, because even even inexpensive things add up to be kind of expensive things and it's just like I said I've got these and taking time off from work back at my last company I had a plethora of vacation I had more than eight weeks combined of vacation and sick time so taking time off was not an issue as far as well actually they were pretty good about me taking the time they said yeah sure if you need to go take the time off with rare exceptions and then I had money for it Oh, good. Thank you for asking, Lisa. Israel was was very good. It was a very good, um, always a blessing. Always a, always a blessing. Um, it was the nice, I th I'd say the highlight for this trip was that I got to go see Masada this time, whereas the first time it was too windy and the cable car going up was not allowed to, to operate. And it is... Um, that was my second time going. And so hopefully there'll be a third time coming up in November again, and then again in January. Maybe, maybe this coming July as well. So there's where some other expense comes in because I don't have vacation time. These free trips, because I don't I don't pay to go, they, they still cost me money because uh, I'm not getting paid yet. We're not, we're not profitable with the company yet where I can be taking in any money. And so, um, yeah, Masada is very interesting, <clears throat> but it doesn't cost me that, you know, I don't pay for my, my way over or, or such. So, um, and, but it should be a little cheaper now too, because I don't, I don't really buy, don't need to buy souvenirs. Like my first time I went, I had a shofar, I had to get a shofar the first time. And so that, that's where I got my shofar here. So this is uh, the shofar that I got. And I like this because it's got the messianic seal on it. Look at there, it's got the messianic seal. And so does my little temple menorah. Also got the messianic seal. Got a prayer book, which I thought was really cool. And there's that in English and in Hebrew. And then a couple of kippah there. And then, yay. Shofar, show good. So that's, but this is by um, Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, Christy's got to go. Come on. All right. Bye, Christy. See you later. I'm going to wave this way. Bye. <laughs> good to see you again. Um, when you go to, um, oh, goodness, when you go to the tomb of the garden, they give you these little um, olive wood communion cups for when you take communion there so this is from the first trip and this is from the the last trip we just went so and there's my fam at my niece's wedding that's my family right there um so that's um what's, what's out there okay the old city yes did go shopping in the old city in fact um did um both the muslim and the jewish Court, still learning more around the city and so it's just it sounds awful but it's like in the I feel better buying my Judaica in the Muslim quarter <laughs> because some some of my Judaica the more touristy Judaica hence the uh, like the um, like the little menorah stands because the Muslims will sell the messianic little temple menorahs where I think the 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 Jews are not too keen on that, and plus I just feel less conspicuous buying it. Um, oh, oh, a sheepskin coat—that's like my camel bag. It didn't smell like that, but your sheepskin coat sounds really cool. Um, but next time in the Jewish quarter, I will go buy some nice challah covers. Um, I'll you know, buy a nice challah cover. I saw some very pretty things, and someone bought some really nice stuff. And I do want to get a. Um, do want to get probably a Hanukkah, uh, a Hanukkah, a, a good Hanukkah menorah. So shopping in the Muslim quarter, I felt a little bit more comfortable doing that. 
I have to say this too, and the, the Muslims are actually, here's the interesting thing about Jerusalem, maybe Israel in general, is just, it's the status quo, and that's the, the status of existence between the Jews and the Muslims and the Christians, but primarily the Jews and the Muslims, the status quo on things. And so you've got, and of course, Jerusalem is divided up into, into the quarters. You know, there's the Armenian quarter, the, the Jewish quarter, and then the, the Muslim quarter. In the Muslim quarter, you've got, like I said, my friend Joel put it this way. He says, you know, you've got the Muslims selling the, the, um, the Palestinian flag and selling the, you know, the BDS stuff and, you know, unified Palestine, all this other kind of stuff. And then you also have them side by side with other Muslims who were selling, um, you know, crosses and Catholic icons and and Judaica and Messianic Judaica and it's just you know you all side by side and then you've got you know there's like a mishmash and everybody doesn't like each other but they all still kind of get along it's really kind of it's it's the oddest the oddest dynamic and it's hard to put words onto that level of tension and it's also it's like a combination of tension, yet, yet uh, live and let live, really. And, it, and it's just a, it just a, a le easy, just, like I said, just an e it's hard to put into words. It is really hard to put into words. And it's just one of those things that I encourage you to go to Israel and just see for yourself, just for that, it, it's, it's a remarkable vibrancy that, this is the crux of this is the crux of our spiritual history let me just say that much so when you have the crux of the spiritual history for three major groups three major groups are all claiming especially temple mount all claiming temple mount as like the the oranges of their you know religion it is just an an interesting dynamic just a very interesting dynamic <clears throat> now of course on the temple mount you know, is where the Dome of the Rock is, and that's not a holy site for the Muslims. And so up there, there's also a mosque up there as well. And if you are non-Muslim, yes, you can go up there. However, it's strictly regulated. Um, you cannot take it, you cannot wear a kippah. Anybody wearing a kippah? No. They will hold it until you come back. I haven't seen this personally because I've not gone back, uh, because our tour guides have not taken us up there. Although it is possible, you can go, but you cannot take a Bible. You cannot take anything up there at all. Um, anything that is non-Muslim related. And you can only go, even as a non-Muslim, you can only go a certain distance. Non-Muslims have their own entrance. So there are two different ways to go up that way. Um, <clears throat> there's certain parts of Israel where Israeli citizens cannot go. Uh, Bethlehem is under Palestinian control. Is it, or the, it was the an, an, uh, Antononian, Antonian Roman fortress. Really? Is that where the really I see and thank you Eric because there's so much to catch up with it's like all these things it's like I I you know you read up and you can read up and you cannot read up enough and know Bethlehem was yeah Bethlehem was beautiful it was uh, it's old old town it's an old town like everything it's an old town Bethlehem was, I thought for me, it was a little bit of a letdown. A little bit of a, I don't know what exactly what I was expecting or what to look for, but because it was under Palestinian control, it feels odd. It just feels a little strange. And it does have a nice, nice little square out there. Um, and speaking of the status quo, again, it's very odd. Like, they will not allow Jewish-Israeli citizens in, yet, however, it's, it's a very Muslim-controlled area. But there's Santa Claus right there, you know, a big statue of Santa Claus and a big giant Christmas tree that they do every year. And it's been, uh, I know Sherry, it's been a while since you've been, you need to come back. You, you need to go back. And, uh, is, but in fact, when we went the first time too, they had the Christmas tree, you know, up in the, in the square already. So it's very, very odd. Just, just, and that's just seems to be the whole, the whole theme of the entire place. It's just very odd. Oh my goodness, gang, it's been, t I've been on for an hour just talking. I don't know how I do, I never, I don't know how I'm able to do that at all. Y'all are awesome. <laughs> y'all are so sweet. So it was very good getting to talk with you. I'm going to let y'all go now because this has been an hour 
and I'm going to leave. <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting your time. <laughs> and y'all feel obliged to stay, so I'm going to I am going to go. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. It's really good. Are y'all I'm enjoying it actually. I'm really having a good time. So this is nice. So because I haven't gotten to see y'all in forever and to talk with you even by instant messaging, it's nice to just see a pop up and I can relate a little bit. So Sherry, thank you for coming by. I appreciate it. Oh my goodness. Hey, uh, Worms, I'm going to ask you, I, I haven't been watching too many of the videos too much lately. I've been watching some at work, work a little bit in the morning before anybody else gets there. And while I'm, I'm counting out some of the money. Um, now, do we know the, the sex of the baby yet? Or, or are you going to keep that a surprise? And I think we said, didn't you say it's a boy, isn't it? Let's see if you can tell. I thought, we, I thought you said it's a boy. Um, but have you decided on names to tell us? I mean, I'm sure you decided on a name probably, but have you told us a name? So I'd love to hear. I'm going to have to go back and look and, and do my research on that. Um, I have been on a, uh, you won't know until birth. Oh, wow. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's sweet, Sherry. She's going to wait. And, yeah. Yeah. So nobody knows. Oh man. Well, I guess if you don't, I mean, I guess nobody else knows. You won't share. Ah, we need to have a contest where we can guess. <laughs> we need to guess. All right, gang. It was very good getting to see y'all again. At least, at least in this respect. So I hope y'all have um, a good day and a blessed remainder of the Sabbath. And uh, so that's true. That's true. Um, some things do have to be private and family only. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So hope y'all just have a good one. And I am going to go take a nap now. I am worn out. And so I can wake up and look at this mess and, and then get to work and clean up tomorrow later. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Y'all have a good night and a good day. I'll see y'all later. It's good getting to see and talk with you again. See you. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>